What's up, Hope Kids? I am so glad that you guys are tuning in for Hope Kids at Home. My name is Pastor Tony, and I am so glad you are here as we continue talking about our life app for the month, determination. Determination is making a plan and living it out. Whether this is your first time joining us or you've been here all month long, we have been talking about how our life is a race and our race needs a plan. We need to know how to run our race well and ultimately lives our, live our lives well. We do that by knowing that our race is because of Jesus. It's on the foundation that Jesus loves us so much that he died for our sin. All of our mistakes, all of our um, the bad choices we have done, all of our naughtiness, Jesus has died for that. Then we talked about how we can be wise builders, building our life on God's word, not by just hearing God's word, but living it out. Last week we talked about how we can pray, and we talked about the way that we can pray. We can praise God for who he is, we can ask him to do things in and through us so that way people can see Jesus through our example. We can ask for needs in our life and then also we can ask for forgiveness of our sins, but also ask for forgiveness for those who hurt us. Well, another mile marker that we're talking about today is talking. That's right, talking. Well, you're like probably saying, well, we talked about prayer and that's talking. It is, it's talking to God and it's talking with God, but today we're talking about talking with others. What does it look like to talk about God with other people? And I know talking about God can be scary and intimidating and something you just don't do because you get tongue you get tongue twisted, kind of like me just right there, or you don't know the words to say. And so before we dive in, we're going to play a little game. It's actually riddles. These are 10 riddles that are kind of gonna come up on the screen where you have to figure out what's the right word that goes for the riddle. You guys can submit these in the Hope Kids virtual room. Look for week four of Hope Kids at Home game. You'll see the form there to fill it out. Type in what you think the riddle is and then we'll have prizes for the winner. So check out these riddles and I'll see you guys after the game is done. to figure out honestly for me if I didn't have the answer sheet I would not be able to figure those out and a lot of times we treat talking about God with others kind of like those riddles where they're just really hard to come up with the words but maybe in what if it's not as hard as what we think it is so let's go ahead and check out the so-and-so show and let's see about the ways that we can talk about God with others this next week I'll see you guys after the video is done <laughs> Yeah. Whoa, 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 Brandon. What, what? Take it easy there, man. What? The, you, you, you have to use those things properly. Do you know how many side effects there are to that? With this? What, yeah. Like what? Well, they cause flexing, bruising, exhaustion, tiredness, nausea, headaches, body aches, heart aches, fake aches, energy loss, energy gain, thoughtful conversations, pointed observations, excited exclamations. Neutral fingernails, you can't stop dribbling a basketball, flat feet, incredibly arched feet, scissor hands, makes you lose your keys. 
Water starts to taste like orange juice, which is really bad when brushing your teeth. Vitamin D deficiency. Moist palms. All your electronics break. Gawking onlookers. Frenetic trembles. Traumatic trembles. Grammatic mumbles. Tic tac tumbles. Your eyes become toes. Your mom forgets your birthday. You get too muscly and you can't wash your back in the shower. Paper cuts. Sc soft stool. So every time you try and sit down on a stool, it just collapses under you. You bump your head indoors when you walk through. Tremendous lats. <sighs> and dry mouth. <sighs> Whoa. That's impressive. Are there any uh, side effects to talking so fast? <clears throat> Uh, hello everyone, my name's John. And I'm Brandon. And this is the So-and-So Show. We've got a great show for you today. John is getting the crowd psyched up and ready to watch. Yeah, today we've got uh, uh, Bible story time with Kellen. One. We'll have our question of the day. Two. And I think we've got a guest on the show. Three. That's right, folks. John just listed three things that are happening on the show today. He's three for three. Okay. You know what? Uh, uh, <laughs> what are you doing, John? Just insert your name. Uh-oh, looks like John's starting to lose focus. No, I'm not. I'm just trying to figure out and what's going on. And he's lost it. Oh, can't keep it together. You hate to see that. Will you stop it? What? What? I'm just... I'm training to become a play-by-play -play announcer. A what? Well, you know, the person who says everything that's happening during sporting events. It's always been my dream to meticulously describe something that people are already seeing with their own eyes. Yeah, that does sound pretty exciting. I know! And here's an expert to give me some pointers. Please welcome someone who knows stuff. Hey, hello, come on in. Have a seat, have a seat. So tell everybody out there who you are and what you know. My name is Doris Nolan and I'm a sportscaster. Oh. I do a little bit of everything, but what I do most is play-by-play -play commentary. Hmm. Brandon is stepping up to the plate, looking to deliver the compliment that will put him into Doris Nolan's good graces, the wind-up, the pitch, and... Doris, so glad that you're here. I'm, I'm a huge fan. <laughs> Thank you, Brandon. I and it's that. a home run, everyone! He makes contact and sends it out of the park! Wow, it, it looks like you're looking to get into the world of play-by-play -play commentary yourself. Yeah, that's true. Do you have any advice? Uh, like anything, you've got to make a plan and see it through. I started reporting for high school games and worked my way up. It wasn't quick, but I was passionate about it, so I just kept going. And practice, 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 just like you're doing. Practice out loud what you want to say and how you'll say it. Is there any chance that you could give me a demonstration? Uh, sure. John, could you do me a favor and get me a cup of coffee? Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> Now, there are a lot of different ways to call a game. The way we're talking right now is one way. It's just a normal conversation. Like, you can tell John has done this before. He knew right where the coffee station was. There was no pause, no hesitation. Look at that confidence. Isn't that right, Brandon? Y yeah. Oh, no need to be nervous. We're just talking, right? Right, sorry, sorry. Confidence is key in this business. Understood. Another key is being aware of your surroundings. Like, I might call a golf tournament a little different. Watch. John has selected the 16-ounce disposable insulated cup. It's a good choice for this moment. It will keep the coffee warm longer, plus it's biodegradable, so it's good for the environment. Brandon? That's right, Doris! And he's crushed the cup. Was that too much? For golf, probably. Uh. <laughs> but hey... You messed up with confidence. You got to make mistakes, Brandon. That's how you learn. Let's try this time like we're calling a race. John's taking a pit stop to put a sleeve on the cup. No one wants a hot hand when you're trying to carry a cup of coffee. And the sleeve is on. It's time to pour. No time to waste. Regular or decaf? What's it going to be? Regular. That's the kind of fuel that'll push him past the competition. But will he use creamer? What do you think, Brandon? I... Don't know! No, no, don't feel bad. Look, you just said the three words that are the hardest for a sports commentator to say. I don't know. It's okay not to know everything. It's a lot better than pretending you know something you don't. 
<laughs> You're on the right track. Trust me. Really? Really. Now, give it another shot. We're calling soccer now. John's got control of the coffee, but he's still got a big decision to make. Cream or sugar? Cream or sugar? Cream or sugar? And he goes for the cream. A great call. He pours the cream in a smooth pour and an impressive showing. But he's not done there, Doris. John makes the bold choice to go for the cream and the sugar, but it will it will, but will it be too sweet to drink? He stirs, he sips, and it's good. It's good. Go! That was awesome. <laughs> Thank you for your help. <laughs> and thanks for the coffee, John. Oh, you're welcome. It's Bible story time with Kelly! What's up, fellas? Oh, hey, Kellen. What are we talking about today? Well, today we're talking about a time Jesus asked his disciples this question. Who do you say I am? And we'll find out what they said today on... Thinking out loud. Here's how this game works. I will ask our contestants questions. They will be given a moment to think before they answer. And then they will answer the question out loud. Let's meet our contestants. My name is Erica and I'm a real estate agent in Omaha, Nebraska. I'm Louise and I wanted to give a quick shout out to my friends back home in Linwood, California. Go Falcons, woo! And I'm one of the 12 disciples of Jesus. Hi, I'm Peter. I don't think I have to tell you this, but just in case, the real Peter never appeared on a game show. Let's play Thinking Out Loud. First question is for Erica. Can God, the creator of the universe and everything in it, create something that is too heavy for himself to lift? Erica, start thinking. Wow, okay, that's a hard one. Now I know that God can do anything, right? So he can create anything. But then, God is also really strong. So there's nothing he can lift. But wait, can it be both things at once? I don't know. Am I going to sound dumb if I say I don't know? That's not an answer. I feel like I have to have an answer. But what if I... Time's up, Erica. Can God create something that is too heavy for himself to lift? Uh, um, well, here's, here's the thing. There are a lot of variables to consider, and what I am trying to say is I don't know the answer. Very good, Erica. You thought out loud. Sometimes questions don't have a clear-cut answer, and saying I don't know is perfectly fine. 10 points. I wonder what the points are for. Absolutely nothing. Up next, Louise, your question. You're in school and a friend wants to copy your test. What do you say? Start thinking. Oh man, why couldn't I have gotten the last one? This one is so hard. I know it's wrong to let someone cheat. Of course it is, but can I really say that here? I mean, what if my friends are watching? I don't want them to think I'm a loser or whatever. No, wait. I know just what to say. So, Louise, you're in school, and a friend asks to copy off your test. What do you say? I don't know, Kellen. Ooh. So sorry, Louise. You didn't think out loud. You did know the answer, but you kept it to yourself because you were afraid of what people might think. When you know what's right, you should let it out. So that brings us to our story. Jesus came up to Peter and his other disciples and asked, who do people say I am? And they replied, some say John the Baptist or Elijah or Jeremiah or one of the prophets. And then Jesus said to them, but what about you? Who do you say I am? Peter. When Jesus said to you, who do you say I am? What was your reply? Who do I say Jesus is? Well, 
He's, he's a teacher. He's taught me so much, but he's more than that. He's, he's a miracle worker. I've seen him walk on water. I've, I've seen him feed thousands of people with a few loaves of bread and fish. He's, he's healed people who are sick and given sight to the blind. He's, he's the one the prophet spoke about hundreds of years ago, the savior that God promised. He's the Messiah. But do I have the courage to actually say that out loud? Peter, when Jesus said to you, who do you say I am? What was your reply? I said, you are the Messiah. You are the son of the living God. Yes, that's what Peter said when Jesus asked him, who do you say I am? He said what was on his heart. He talked about what he believed with other people. Thank you, Peter, for thinking, thinking out loud. <laughs> it's good to talk about what we believe. The more we practice talking about God, the more comfortable we are. You can talk about God with people who believe the same as you or people who believe differently than you. If you have questions, ask. And if you don't know an answer, that's okay too. Just keep talking. I'll see you guys next time. Hey, thanks, Kellen. Kellen, once again, showing everyone how it's done. <sighs> We're still doing this? Doris told me to keep practicing if I want to be good, so... Okay, okay. Reveal the question! Ah, who can you talk to about God? Maybe you can talk to your parents. Uh, or your friends. Or a teacher, or a small group leader. Or you can talk to us. Go, go ahead. Yeah, we can't hear you. Still good practice yeah. just talking. <laughs> After an intense episode of The So-and-So Show, we're ready to sign off here. So until next time, my name is Brandon. And I'm John. And we'll see you. Let me do it. Oh. We'll see you next time. And Brandon has approached the coffee table. He's going for the regular caffeine, which is a risk for somebody who doesn't drink coffee. He's smelling it. It does not smell enticing at all. He's questioning why he's doing this. It looks like he's smelling he's tested the public cream cup oh he's putting the sugar straight into his mouth that's great it'll help the coffee go down sweeter that's and he takes a big gaping sip oh he spill oh he does not enjoy it wow i've never seen anybody gargle with hot coffee kids do not do that at home oh he doesn't have his wallet he does not have his wallet. Is he going to make a run for it, or is he going to be an upstanding citizen like a host of so-and-so show should be? Nope, he's running. <laughs> so Jesus are, is with his disciples, and he asks them a very important question. Who do you say that I am? I don't know about you, but if I was a disciple, I'd be kind of guess, second-guessing my answer. I mean, the Son of God is asking me, who do you say that I am? And as you know from the other disciples, they said that, well, you're John the Baptist or you're Elijah the prophet. They had all these ideas about who Jesus was, but it wasn't until Peter's answer that he truly knew who God was. And he said, Jesus, you are the Messiah. You are the son of God, our Lord. You see, the disciples had all these questions about who Jesus was. Even though they walked with Jesus, they traveled with Jesus, they saw Jesus perform miracles, they had meals with Jesus, they had conversations with Jesus, they saw Jesus teach, they saw Jesus do amazing things. They still had questions about who this Jesus guy really was. But the thing with the disciples and what we can take from this event, from this story, is that they shared what their thoughts were. They didn't keep it hidden. They didn't run away from Jesus after he asked them that question. Instead, they shared what they thought Jesus was. Now, for most of them, their, their thought was incomplete. They didn't truly grasp onto who Jesus really was except for Peter. But that's like for a lot of us, right? We know some things about God, but there's other things that we have questions about. We don't know the answers to the things that we, whether we read in the Bible or we hear in Hope Kids, or maybe you're just wondering about. But it's important to ask those questions. It's important to talk it out, and so that way you can discover the answer. And that's our, or that's our bottom line for today, is just talk about God. Not just talk about the questions that you have, but also share what you are learning as well. You can share with family and friends about things you're learning in Hope Kids. You can share them the video that you guys just watched from the so-and-so show and share the story about talking about God and who Jesus is because 
When, G when Peter said that Jesus is the Messiah, guess what? Jesus is the Messiah for us too. And we can share that with other people. I know talking about God is scary. I know you wonder what your friends are gonna think. I know there are a lot of things like, I don't have the right answers. What if I stumble over my words? But you have the power, if you are a Jesus follower, you have the Holy Spirit to guide you. And you could rely on him to give you the words to say. Kind of like last week we talked about prayer. You can ask God, God, give me the words to talk about you for other people to hear the good news as far as who you are. So that's my challenge for you this week is talk about God. Is there someone that doesn't go to church that you can share about Hope Kids with? If there's someone that you can encourage, you can give them something that you've read in scripture as an encouragement. Or if you just want to share the amazing things that God is doing, share away. If you have questions, ask a small group leader, ask your parents, ask someone that you trust as a Jesus follower to help you as you guys continue to grow in your faith. Whatever it is, don't keep it inside. Let the world know about your questions and also more importantly, what God is doing in your life. Hope kids, that's our challenge for you this week. Talk about God. If uh, again, as always, we have Hope Kids open, so I hope to see you guys in person soon. If you're not signed up for Summerfest, you need to get signed up for Summerfest. It is going to be one of the best weeks of your summer, June 7th through 11th here at Hope. We are gonna have an amazing time. There's a couple surprises we have up our sleeves that we don't want you guys missing out on. If we don't see you at any of those events, we'll see you guys next week at Hope Kids at Home.